stages of their business, you know, whether you're a beginner and you haven't gotten any clients yet, or, you know, you're more advanced and you're used to getting clients either organically or through referrals, but you're looking for a way to maybe automate that process or to have something more predictable and consistent in terms of bringing more clients into your business, um, then Facebook ads are a really good um, way to do that. So um, I will say that the strategies that I'm going to share today are going to work best for people who have either, you know, some type of service-based business, or maybe you're a coach, whether it's life coach, business coach, any kind of coach where you're supporting someone else, which ultimately is a service-based business. Um, and even for those who might have a digital product-based business, um, I, just to be clear that e-commerce strategies are a little bit different. So if you have like an online store, then um, that is going to be a separate strategy than what I'll share with you guys today. Absolutely. We appreciate you, Queen, and being with us for today's episode. Uh, we're talking to my very special guest, Amber McDuffie, on how to get clients using Facebook ad strategies. Uh, Amber, what we usually have our guests tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, where you're originally from, your hometown, uh, where you're streaming with us for today's episode. And also, like, how did you get uh, into the beautiful uh, space of ads and even uh, specific, specifically Facebook ads marketing. Yeah. So I claim Knoxville, Tennessee is my hometown just because that's where I went to high school. So I, I've moved, I've lived in a couple of states and cities, but um, that is where I went to high school. So Knoxville, Tennessee. And then I have been here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. If you know Atlanta, you might know the, the suburbs. So I'm out in Gwinnett County, but Atlanta, if you don't know Georgia like that. And so I have been here for probably like a long time, 17 years, something like that. I've been here. But um, my so originally I was in public relations like that was my dream job. I had always planned on moving to Atlanta and getting a job in PR and uh, life happened. I had my son my senior year in college. And so that career just did not lend itself to, um, you know, basically having such a rigorous career. And so having a rigorous career and a small child, just it didn't match. So what I did end up doing was I got my master's degree in teaching. So I ended up being in education for several years and just you know, being a leader, I've been a leader of sorts all my life, you know, naturally progressed into leadership and education, was an assistant principal for five years. But um, and I loved education. I mean, I absolutely love kids, but it just it was not fulfilling me anymore. And I just always was like this serial entrepreneur, always starting businesses and just not really knowing exactly what to do to make it successful. But I was always willing to try something. And in fact, I, I started my first business um, just two years after my son was born, trying to make that work, but obviously just didn't have enough guidance or mentorship. I didn't meet my first, you know, real entrepreneurial mentor, like a real person who could stand in front of me and really inspire me. And so I got married. That was my husband. <laughs> He's been an entrepreneur pretty much all his life. So I was very grateful to have met him and to really just see what it truly takes to be successful, which is perseverance, keep going. Um, and as you keep going, you start to learn things and figure things out. So um, just before, though, I became an assistant principal, um, I had started an online business and I actually started in e-commerce, but it was not like it wasn't an online store that I had passion for. But I did learn ads, you know, initially through that. And so once I learned ads and marketing, like it took me back to my roots of PR, marketing, communications, and I just fell in love with it. So what I did is I started helping teachers to start, you know, an online business um, and how they could market their talents, um, whether it was through an online course or through coaching. And then, you know, I would start to teach them the Facebook ads as well. So one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that with Facebook ads, you don't have, like I mentioned before, you don't have to have all this experience. You can start with Facebook ads in your business. Because when I did start my online, you know, especially my um, digital course business, right out the gates, 
I used ads and it never even, it was never even a thought for me to try to, you know, build a business organically in, in this space. Um, you know, prior to that, of course, I had tried different things like website SEO and, you know, using Google My Business, trying to put myself out there in ways that, you know, how can people find me and what I do? But the minute I learned about ads, I jumped on it and didn't even hesitate. And so I, I have just enjoyed being able to tell people like you don't have to wait. You don't there's no there's nothing saying that you have to have so many followers or have made so many sales before you can use ads. And, you know, really the main thing that you need to have is a validated offer, which a way to prove that your offer is valid is to sell it, even if it's just to one person. However, you can actually use ads to validate your offer as well. But the the main thing that the main advantage that you have with using ads versus just organic alone is that you can put your content in front of the ideal people, the actual people who would be most interested in what you sell and who are most likely to take action. So the strategy that I want to go with, go through with you guys today is kind of, it's basically a sales funnel because your ad itself isn't the one thing that's going to sell your offer, um, but it brings in the right people and then it kind of deposits them into this customer journey that you create so that they can become aware of you, what you offer, how you solve the problem that they have, do some research about you through this funnel, you know, through your email marketing, uh, through your organic social media. That's where the organic can really come into play. So whether you have a 